This is Ron. I'm on the subject of frequency modulated power again. I got some new potentiometers and I've been able to dial in some uh, power ratings more accurately. So again, here's my uh, schematic for what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a 555 timer running a transistor which is going to uh, vary the frequency on a standard transformer and we're going to power a six watt load which will be an LED light bulb and the battery pack I'm using is at 10.72 so you can see that and it's the uh, battery pack uh, right over there and uh, this is the scene uh, again, that's the uh, 555 timer over there. Uh, I have better potentiometers. And I've already dialed in an exciting reading. And I'm going to uh, turn the camera off. And uh, I'm going to light this up in a second and let you uh, watch the power meter and such. Be right back. Okay, one brief moment. I just backed up from my, uh, my uh, experiment table over here. You can see my tripod. The reason I have trouble making these things, I keep forget what I'm saying, is because I got a cat who is underfoot constantly. Gigi, what are you doing under there? <laughs> so sometimes, uh, you know, forgive me if I get a little distracted and forget what I'm saying. I'll get back to you in a second. I got to set up again. Okay, I'm back. Again, I'm using a standard transformer here. Uh, the transformer's output is going to go through a full wave bridge rectifier. And again, the timer is turning the uh, transistor on and off, giving me a uh, AC voltage to a uh, my favorite light bulb set up with a light meter over here. I've already measured the uh, efficiency or the light output of this bulb from the uh, wall socket. And I have a uh, pointer uh, set to where that brightness was on that light meter. We'll look at that in a minute. But first, I've already dialed in these potentiometers to a very effective range for this particular bulb. I'm going to plug it in right now. I like to use a closed circuit like a battery like this so there's no outside influences. I can tell what's going on. And uh, the bulb is brightly lit over there. The circuit is running. Uh, you don't hear anything, of course. This It's not like a jewel ringer. And... Uh, if you can see that light output, just under 300 milliamps. Okay, we already measured the, the battery at 10.72. So that's only about 3 watts. And uh, let me zoom out. I'll pick up my camera. And uh, the bulb is very brightly lit. And uh, that reading, the yellow pointer, was set to full brightness from the wall socket. And the white pointer is what we're at right now. And it's a measured distance away. Uh, the bulb's brightness was measured at a particular distance. That's why I like to use my, uh, my X Bedini motor uh, because it has a, uh, a wooden stop right there I get to push the bulb against. And there's a line down here that I used to put the front of the uh, light meter case on. So, <laughs> so I'm getting full efficiency. See, it holds nice and steady. Full efficiency with three watts. Getting full brightness out of a six watt bulb. I'm getting th six watts of work from three watts. Okay, let's uh, let's go talk about how that's possible. I'm going to take you over to the computer and show you a paper from a physicist I found. Okay, I found a paper by a Dr. Joe Evans. Uh, he has a, a, a bunch of papers he's written. This one's called uh, Pump Education 101. He works for a pump and uh, uh, AC motor company. And uh, he writes papers explaining to customers about pitfalls 
of what can happen when they use their products. So, what Dr. Joe talks about with the AC waveform, pardon me while I make you sick, hold on a second. Uh, basically, he's talking about the variable frequency drive they use to make their motors uh, uh, run more efficiently and at very variable speeds. And uh, shows basically uh, different waveforms, different rectifiers they use. Uh, the important part about this is that he explains how square waves can equal sine wave waves. So square waves are, are, are used in their device to alter the speed of AC motors. And uh, there's some pitfalls involved with that. Uh, pitfalls that we are creating on purpose. He talks about the effective voltage of AC power and that only 70% uh, of the power coming in at 60 Hertz is actually effective for doing any actual work even though the peak voltage coming into your household current may be as high as 170 uh, so he explains the math behind that and then we go on to see Ba -da -ba. He talks about harmonics briefly, etc., etc., can damage motors. Do -do -do. Voltage spikes can ruin motors. Uh, we get down to some interesting stuff here. Uh, he talks about he talks about reflected voltage and how it can double the amplitude of your AC wave. And he also talks about ringing, as in the jewel ringer. So he is stating that uh, if you can change the frequency uh, with their variable speed drive, that occasionally you'll run into the problem of instead of getting a square wave, you'll get a saturated wave uh, with much more power than you intended going to the motor. And I believe that's what I've created with the 555 timer. Uh, I'm creating a reflective waves, which are doubling over on themselves. Plus, I think there's a bit of resonant ringing, giving us more effective voltage. Uh, even though we may not read the voltage as being 120 AC, uh, I read my uh, circuit at 78 volts but it runs my bulb as if it's 120. So I believe I am singing, uh, seeing some harmonic ringing as in this waveform here, uh, which gives you more effective voltage to drive your circuits. So that's how three watts can drive uh, a six watt circuit just as effectively. I believe that we are inducing ringing in the circuit. We find a harmonic spot where that transformer really likes to let loose and we get a little extra voltage in the uh, process. So that's my story. I'm back with one final thought about this uh, harmonic ringing. Uh, I guess the point I want to make is it's a well-known uh, feature of AC electronics, uh, but the the answer to it is always to shunt it off to ground, uh, never to reuse it, which I think is a waste. And also, let me uh, read you what ringing says here by Dr. Joe. We'll zoom out a little bit. The statement says, uh, ringing is the result of capacitance and inductance of the cable motor and output circuit of the variable frequency drive, or a 555 timer. Together, they can create a resonant circuit that can cause the edges of the voltage circuit to assume an undampened ringing waveform. When combined with reflection, ringing can result in voltage peaks at the motor of two to three times normal peak voltage. So, I guess all our questions uh, would be, well, if this happens, 
uh, why don't you cause it to happen on purpose and repurpose that energy back into the circuit and save some money? I mean, why not use it? Why, why is the answer always to shunt it to ground? I guess that's always the easy answer if you have unlimited funds. Hey, why not? So I guess uh, it's, the, it's the inefficiency that's built into the system that's so, so readily done that I find kind of irking, I guess is the right word. Well, that's my uh, tirade. You can tell I'm over 50, right? Always got, uh, always got a story. This is Ron. See you.